Hello, in this Cocos 2DX C++ networking video, I'm going to show you how to return a JSON array from your server to Cocos 2DX. Because so far, we've looked at sending data and actually receiving data, but the data has literally just been a single value. It could have been a number or a string, but you might want something a little more than that. I'll give you an example. You query your server for the top five scores in the world. So basically you want the top five high scores. You don't want to have to query your server five different times to get the high scores, second, third, fourth and fifth. You want to be able to do it in one request and return it as some sort of array. And that's what we're going to be showing you how to do. It's actually not that hard at all. So make sure you've got your project set up for networking if you haven't don't worry there's a video in this series covering all of that good stuff we're going to be doing it with the get request but it works with the post request as well we've tried it with that it's a-okay it's just because we're not going to be sending any data you can do but we're just not going to be because it doesn't really need to be done just for educational purposes so let's get to it first thing we need to include a couple of headers do hash include vector hash include spine not spine spine for slash json dot h the vector is a built in c plus plus header so if you if I just right click jump to definition as you can see it's a c plus plus file whereas the json dot h is actually a file that's part of cocos 2 dx but we don't need to actually add any external files they're already in our project so the next thing that we need to do is actually specify the url i've got a url right here and i've already set up a json array so let's take a look at what we've got we've got three different values index a b and c at index a we have the integer value 700 at the index b we have the integer i mean we have a string which says hello my name is batman and then in the third index we have a float number which is 3.75 so we're going to show you how to get an integer a string and a float variable then after that we're just returning it if you just go to the website it simply just prints it out like so so this is the url that we need you're more than welcome to use this as well okay i just want to explain one more thing the reason we're not really going to going into any depth about this php file is because you might not be using php on your server side this video isn't really about teaching you server side code because plenty of videos on sonar learning for that it's about getting the data in cocos 2 dx because once it's been sent or returned from the server regardless of what language it's in it'll be interpreted the same on cocos 2 dx and that's what we're interested in so let's copy the url here now that we got that we need to set the request type so do set request type do cocos 2d network colon colon http request colon colon type colon colon get like i said you can use post if you want to it's going to keep it simple with this that's actually all set up here and now what we can actually do is start it interpreting the data we need to do std vector this is char asterisk buffer and this is simply going to get the response data and now we're just going to create a char pointer concatenated not concatenated concatenated equals let's cast this over to a char malloc is going to allocate some memory and for this we're just going to do buffer size plus one semicolon here we're just getting all the data that we're going to be interpreting so string it's going to call this string two 
We're going to do buffer begin buffer end. Now we're going to do str cpy, which is a string copy concatenated and the other value is going to be c2 dot c underscore string oh no not s2 should be string2 I was wondering why IntelliSense wasn't working that was my bad And now what we're going to do is actually pass the JSON because we've got the raw text now and if we were to print this out or just log it out we would essentially get what we've got here. But we, we need to interpret this somehow. We need to be able to get the value at index A, index B, index C and so forth. So to do that, just create a JSON object, JSON, asterisk JSON. That's why we included this JSON file right here for this bad boy here. And the vector was included for this. So JSON equals JSON underscore create and has provided the concatenated value. And now we can actually get our data because we have it all set up. We just we can simply do int var one equals JSON underscore get int specify the JSON object JSON now specify the index that we want to get it for remember it is a for an integer right here and the default value is used if for whatever reason something goes wrong and therefore you will use a default value so for this I'm going to put minus one I'm going to now put const char asterisk var2 equals json underscore get string json object now the name aka the index is b and the default value I'm going to say mm, something went wrong something went wrong and now int now I'm gonna put float var2 var3 I mean equals json underscore get float and for this specify json the name is index C and the default value is going to put minus 1.0 F semicolon and now we can actually just log this out so I'm going to do log HTTP response key A I'm going to put percent I now change this to or put this as var1 copy uh, actually learn how to spell first let's copy and paste this a couple of times change this to b c two three finally we can just delete the json object that we no longer need it anymore if you do well obviously keep it before we do that let's just update this because we're in string value let's put percent s and now this needs to be percent f json underscore dispose specify the json object that we want to delete json and now that's all ready to run so if we run this you will see the beauty of getting a json array from a server There we go, it says 700. Hello, my name is Batman and 3.75. Oh, it says fail, but the reason it says fail because this comparison is incorrect. So now if we run it, you'll print out the correct message. So yeah, because 200 is 
good, it means it succeeded, it's not bad. So that's fine. One thing I'll do is actually what I'll do is change this to AB, change this to B3, and change this to B5. So you can actually see the errors occurring or the default value because these don't exist in our JSON array, so you'll fail to get these values. So we've got minus one, something went wrong and minus 1.0 so that's it for returning json arrays from the server if you have any questions feel free to post it on our education platform so not learning uk for slash question dot php we will get onto it as soon as possible and so will the community if you need the source code from this video or you just want to check it out feel free there'll be a link in the description to that if you liked the video please give it a thumbs up comment and hit that subscribe button as it really does help us and as usual thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day